Hello, thanks everybody for waiting. Come on in, come on in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Thomas Brush. I make indie games for a living. Today we're going to make a beautiful landscape that we're going to be, uh, maybe if we have some time, throwing into Unity to create a 2D game, but primarily just focusing on creating a beautiful landscape. And the fun part is we're just going to use crappy eye stock photos. So come on in and let's go ahead and get started. By the way, today's little live stream here is sponsored by full-time game dev this is my massive online program with over 2500 students it is on sale right now 50 percent off for a holiday and a new year's sale you're also going to get a brand new course that i've created called stream my game this is how you can take a small game an unknown game and you can actually pitch it to youtubers and incentivize them to actually play your game on their channel this is what i had to do when my games were unknown and i didn't really have a presence either so if you guys want to join over 2,500 students, there's just 200 seats available, so be sure to check that out. And as always, guys, if that's not really your thing, I totally get it. There's also a free game kit below. You can download that. It's my treat to you. And as always, guys, I appreciate your support. Um, all of these students support the channel, and they help me make games. All right, so we're going to be on um, these two websites here, pexels.com. This is free. And then also iStock. We're just going to use the actual like preview images here to create some beautiful, beautiful landscape art. Come on in, guys, come on in. All right, let's open up Photoshop. We've got a 3840 by 2160 canvas here. And I've got my color palette, and that color palette is basically, um, well, everything we're gonna be using. I think that's about it, right? There's no special colors here. We might throw in, how about we throw in a little pop of color? A little pop of, what, what do you think, maybe? Ooh, this hot pink color might be cool. All right, so these are our colors, guys. That's all we're going to use. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And thanks for waiting while my internet was being weird. I know I'm, I'm basically an hour and a half late here. Come on in, Cody. Come on in. How you doing? Jan, the game dev. Great. I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. All right. The floor is made of wall. What are you talking about? What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, anyway, all right, let's start with the sky. It's not gonna be pink, it's gonna be this beautiful yellow color here. And I'm gonna do this really, really fast, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my polygon lasso tool and I'm gonna take this color here and we're just gonna create a beautiful pine landscape, okay? This is something that we could use for like a game that's set in the mountains, maybe like a Resident Evil, 2D Resident Evil type game, something like that. And what I do is I put a, uh, guide here right where the left edge is right here and then i actually just skew the other side down and match it up that way it loops properly i'm going to crop that and let's just make our way forward really fast okay so something like this okay and we're just going to select remember with our eyedropper just select coming towards the camera with more and more color this is the trick that i think most uh artists aren't willing to really share <laughs> well bob ross did um it's a it's a, it's such a special trick because it really changes your level of professionalism in like five seconds just having an understanding that things get more and more saturated as they come towards the camera right all right if you're just joining us, coming in, coming in, thanks for joining. Guys, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you like this kind of content and you wanna see more of it. Um, I specialize in 2D art, although we're gonna be start doing, start doing some more 3D stuff on this channel. Okay, so we're coming forward. Now we're gonna go ahead and create some platforms, right? Um, so I'm just gonna do a simple square, a rectangle. And this is going to be what we're going to use for what the player can jump on, okay? And these are all generic forms, very basic generic forms, nothing crazy here. Um, the reason we're doing generic forms right now is because I don't really know what this world looks like. So it's going to help me, instead of going and finding all of these images on Getty Images uh, or iStock Photo, instead of finding all those images at the beginning, we find them at the end, right? So in about 20 minutes, well, I'm sorry, in about five minutes, we're going to start doing that. Um, I just want to get these basic forms down. All right, so these are pieces of ground. And one more layer up towards the front. This is going to be our foreground, right? And we're going to do that. And I'm going to make those loopable in just a second. What I mean is, let's make that a little bit darker. So actually go closer and more saturated to the 
there we go. Let's make this dark gray. Um, what I mean, what I mean is, let's make this loopable. I wasn't really thinking here. I'm gonna disable this, and so again, just drag down that. And I'm actually gonna draw in more of a loopable piece. So just connect to it right about there. That way, it's going to loop properly inside of Unity as a tiled sprite. Same is true for this right here. Okay, just draw and then fill it in. Now it's loopable, right? It's that simple. Okay, what about this one? Same sort of thought process. Drag right there and then pop it in like this. Just drawing simple shapes. And by the way, guys, this is all we're using today. Just a simple mouse. And we're just gonna fill that in. There we go, good. Awesome, and then one more here. There we go. Good, good, okay. We'll fill that in. All right, one sec here. Let me... All right, okay, so we've got our shapes, basic shapes here, basic forms. This one we could probably bring up a little bit, and then this one you could bring up like this. So now we've got some really pretty mountains. The final thing I'm gonna do before we jump into our stock photos is just create some very basic clouds, and we might replace these with real clouds, okay? But just basic clouds here. There we go. Basic, basic clouds. Hello, Hector, how you doing, buddy? Guys, let's give a an air power, let's say air power, to Hector. Hector is my personal assistant, and he also does sound design, but he's also in the Air Force. Um, and so you say air power to people who are in the Air Force. Thank you for your service, buddy. All right, and we can bring up our ground and let's jump into our stock photos. And by the way, I haven't really practiced this, so I don't really know what this is gonna look like, right? So we're just sort of having fun here, feeling it out. I'm a guess and check kind of guy. I just kind of want to see how things feel and how things look, um, and then I'll commit. So why did we start in the abstract? The reason we started in the abstract is now I know what this looks like, and if I, squint my eyes and zoom out, I can kind of get an idea. Okay, so we're kind of on a, maybe so a bridge or something, and it's nestled in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains, right? Just squinting my eyes. It looks like a photograph, doesn't it? That's what you want with your artwork. You always want it to look like a photograph. Okay, so what on earth are we gonna use iStock Photo for? Well, first thing we're gonna do is, let's start with the pine trees, right? So we were at, I stock here and we're going to take the search bar here and type in pine tree. And obviously you wouldn't do this for an actual game guys. You'd have to buy it, right? Um, so what I can do though is just copy this. Well, they think they're clever here because I can't copy it, right? Yeah, sure I can. I'm going to screenshot it. <laughs> or what about this? There we go. Hey, there we go. Okay. So we pull this in, right? Just like this scale it up, and then I'm just gonna select the white, delete it, and I'm gonna turn off contiguous. That way I can get all the white removed. Pretty good, I'm gonna actually select it all, and then I'm gonna go in a little bit and zoom in a little bit more here. And by the way, this is a really good exercise because if you're not a great um, illustrator, you can do this kind of stuff as long as the source material is legal, right? So um, pexels.com is a good example. As long as the source material is legal, you can do it. All right, so I'm gonna take this, and I'm actually gonna make it black and white. The reason I'm gonna make it black and white is because I don't really want the colors, um, but I do want the forms, or the, the texture, right? I'm gonna take this and, um, yeah. I'm gonna take this color here, there we go. I'm gonna create a smart object out of this because we might wanna duplicate that and use it over and over again. I'm gonna bring it down to about right here, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of a color overlay. Yep, there we go. Um, actually, we could probably do it better with a gradient. And by the way, I've never done this before, so we'll just see what happens. If you gradient up, look at that. Okay, so now we can gradient up, scale it. Let's go ahead and just um, hop on in and then trim it. Let's see here. Make sure everybody's good here. Everybody good in the chat? By the way, those of you who are just joining us again, this video is sponsored by Full Time Game Dev, which is my massive online program with over 2,500 students worldwide. Very happy students. If you're a student, feel free to say hi in the chat. 
It supports the channel, uh, but more importantly, guys, it supports you because it is it is a uh, investment in your future. I'm gonna scale these down significantly, and these are not gonna have a lot of detail, actually. So what, because anything that's far away, you're just gonna, just make it silhouetted, all right? Just make it silhouetted, you can add details later. So we have these beautiful trees here. I'm just gonna sort of stamp them all over the place. I'm just holding Shift and Alt. You can also just hold Alt, um, but I hold Shift so I can sort of move it straight, okay? Good. Now, obviously, you could make a brush out of this as well if you wanted to. Um, and maybe I can show you how to do that in just a sec. All right, so we've got these little pine trees here. Maybe we're in, uh, what's that uh, state? Um, Montana, right? So maybe not a lot of trees, just sort of vast, right? Okay, so we've got these trees here. I'm going to go ahead and merge all of them down except for that one because I need it as source material as we come forward. So I'm going to duplicate this by creating a new smart object. It's actually a new smart object copy. And if I bring this forward, I can actually scale it up a little bit. And I'm actually going to put it on this layer here. Okay, this one. All right. So I could do a color overlay, drop it down a little bit here. Um, actually, let's do this. I'm going to jump on, jump on inside and then remove that, save that. Okay, now we have a little bit more detail, which is good because we're closer, right? So what, what I can do is do this. There we go. So we have a little bit more detail here. Um, that's great. Okay. So we're going to take that and I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to just go ahead and place them all about. There we go. And then we can paint them later. Okay. There we go. There we go. I'll probably make them a little bit smaller. Yeah. And this here and this here. Awesome. And you can obviously, you know, flip them horizontally. Good, okay. Transform, flip horizontal. Good, good, good. Okay, we're going to take all of these except for one. Again, we need source material, so I'm going to actually duplicate this. Um, new smart object, be a copy, yep. And that one's going to be right here, and that's going to be for right behind the player, okay? So we're going to keep that one, but the rest of them we're going to merge them down because I know that I like it, we're good. Um, and then I can go ahead and paint on top of them just so they blend properly in with the ground here. Wonder why I did that. Hmm. Ah, it's set to color burn, that's why. There we go. There we go, so just sort of fade them in like this and we're gonna make this all blend together properly, but right now we're just adding those subtle details. Let's scale this up significantly here. That's a new smart, I think it's a new smart object via copy. You want it to be a copy so that when you make tweaks like this, yeah, okay, let's see here. They're not adjusting all the other ones. So is this ugly? It is ugly. Let's jump inside of it here and go to the full, yep, go to the full one here and paste that one, okay? There we go, okay. So this is where we could start adding a little bit more color so it's not all blue, right? So what I could do here is actually jump into this here and I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start with a base color actually of like this blue. See, that's really pretty. And then on top of it, I'm going to go ahead and grab this. This is kind of weird, but then I'm going to go to soft light. See that? So soft light is adding a little bit more of that detailing there. And now what we can do is actually go ahead and select portions that we feel should be a little bit more green. Select those just using this mouse here. and slowly adding some changes to the color. We can even add some brown down there if we want, but I'm gonna select just very generic forms here. Okay, select, modify, feather. We're gonna do 60. That's a little much. How about 25? Yeah, that'll do it. And then I'm gonna take this blue and actually just pull down to a more green and then Drop it down and then go to color. Let's see if color will, will color do it. No, I like to ignore. I set to normal here, and just drop it down. Good, good, good. Okay, just very subtle shifts, and we're you know uh, adjusting the hue and sort of drifting away from that original gradient. I kind of do that towards the end, so I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. I'm going to go ahead and just rasterize it, 
and I'm gonna make sure it's behind this. These need to make sure, we need to make sure that they're in the actual proper layers here. There we go. And then these right here, those are gonna be, let's see here, double check, yeah. All right, we'll move those way back here. Very good. Okay, so we've got some trees here. Let's see if I can yeah, duplicate this, just pull it down. Flip horizontal, and we'll scale this one down a little bit like this. Good. And this one, I'm going to do one that's sort of more towards the back. The way we make it look more towards the back is just do a color overlay and then fade it sort of towards the back there. See that? There we go. Cool. Okay, so now we've got a lot more depth here. Very, very good. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, I want to make sure I save this. I'm going to just save it to my desktop. Art with stock photos. All right. Next thing I want to do is come to, uh, let's go ahead and finish up those, those clouds in the background, actually. So let's type this in, evening sky, right? So we're going to get kind of a mix of, uh, mm, that's not an evening sky, my goodness, evening clouds. There we go. So we're going to take this one here. I'm going to expand it. And I'm going to copy it and watch this. Oh, no, Thomas, there's stock photo uh, watermarks everywhere. That's OK. So first off, remember, we're working with um, a color palette, right? So if you take a stock photo or any photo and use it legally, of course, you want to make sure that you set it to a grayscale and then only use its darkness and lightness as texturing. So we're going to do something like we're close, we're close. I you sort of just scrub through here and take a look. So let's see here, what about that? That might work. Okay, cool. Motion blur. And it's gonna get rid of the stock photos, look. There we go. So now we have this nice, beautiful texture. <clears throat> and then let's see if we can type in <clears throat> cloud. See what we can find here. Hmm. Why, thank you. Copy image, paste. Scale that mofo up about like that. I'm going to delete all of the black coloring here. Grab this. Hold your horses. I know it looks bad. I'm going to take this, uh, these clouds here, um, and we're going to remove those just for now. We're going to put them right here, and then we're going to set this to screen. There we go. I'm going to squash it down a little bit. And I think we're good, actually. We don't really need to worry too much about there we go. There we go. And you could do this with your game art. You can totally do this because ultimately, you know, spending so much time in Photoshop means that once you rasterize all the layers, you could just bring them into Unity and it's going to look just as beautiful. So I like to spend a lot of time in Photoshop. Let's transform, flip horizontal, scale them down. Beautiful. Okay, and then even add some layering up towards the sky, like really big ones here. There we go. Drop down the opacity significantly. And actually, we'd put that above. Yeah, there we go. Put that above the other one. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a motion blur. Yeah. There we go. Maybe some wisps sort of coming along the edges like this. Yeah, something like that. Motion blur. There we go. And just keep on keeping on. Look at that. Okay, very cool. Um, I like what I like to do is I have it on the screen over here, and I'll take a look at it and I'll blur my eyes to. Okay, are we on the right track? And I think we are on the right track for sure. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type in, uh, let's say, uh, grassy or or no mountain. Let's type in mountain. We're gonna get some texture here. Oh, that looks cool. Let's take that. Scale it up and cut out the white right um just we're going to take this lasso tool and just really cut it and we're just going to use this to create some sort of texturing okay again these kind of principles can be used when you're creating a 2d game um, you don't have to illustrate everything from scratch you guys know that i'm not a huge fan of that when you're making your first game um, so we're going to take this 
and scale it down. We're probably not even gonna be able to see that iStock logo once we get it so small here. So if I drop the saturation down again, I can use this. Let's see here. Yeah, I can use it, look at this. I can use it to create some texturing. So we're gonna do, let's see, can we do overlay? Ooh, I kinda like overlay. Let's drop the uh, opacity down. Yep. And then what you do is you fade out the bottom with a gradient, like that. And then maybe the left and the right and just paste it all over. Look at this. Look how much it just slowly starts to look more realistic. This is definitely sort of a 3D look to it and I like it. And we're gonna add texturing and all that, or what I mean is um, shadows and lighting and all that in just a sec here. But we wanna make sure that we get our texturing pro um, looking good here. Okay, so you can't even see the stock photo logo, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just come forward, do the same sort of process with each layer, right? Um, I'm gonna scale it up bigger and bigger and bigger. Look, it's kind of like Alaska, I like it. Um, this one here, this one's gonna be a little bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. Do you see what I'm doing here, guys? We started with very generic colors, and then once we figured out what those colors were, we're just using black and white images to uh, and setting them to like overlay or screen or multiply, and that's what's giving it this sort of textured but colored look. It's a lot harder to try and hue shift all the colors for your composite image here when you're doing it all with one-off images. But when you start with a base of color, it's a lot easier to do it. So I, I always highly recommend starting with a very generic base of colors and generic shapes and forms first. Okay, let's just drop down the opacity and I could probably add this to here as well. Yeah, just to add a little bit of detailing. Yep, okay. All right, let's save that out and then come on forward to the, almost the last layer. We're gonna be working on the ground in just a second here, okay? And don't worry, we're gonna hue shift. It's not gonna look so mon monochromatic, um, but right now it's gonna be monochromatic, just for now, okay? I'm gonna save that and you could, you could barely even see that the texture is actually being applied to the trees as well. I'm actually kind of okay with that. Okay, we're not gonna worry about the foreground here and in fact, I could probably just blur it and it would look kind of like a photograph. So I think that's what we're gonna do for now. You could even throw in some of these trees in the foreground. This is just for my sanity, just so I don't have to worry about the foreground too much. Let's really make this big there, there we go. Drop down the color. This is just for me to know that the foreground is there waiting for us and it does look pretty, but we're not gonna worry about the foreground for a while here. There we go. I'm just gonna push this over to the right, just for now. There we go, maybe a few down here. Look at that, little bushes. All right, cool. All right, so the big problem obviously is the ground that we're walking on. So we need to envision, okay, what is this ground? I think it's gonna be some sort of like bridge or ruins, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna merge these, let's see here, actually delete these. And I wanna work with just this piece. This is gonna be modular 2D design, right? When we're making a 2D game, you want it to be modular so that you can use the pieces over and over again. Um, so, sorry, I'm reading the chat. I'm in going, going, going here. <laughs> okay, um, so let's bring this, uh, actually the foreground here. Let's bring it down like this, there we go, okay? All right, so, obviously we need to bring these down too. These are confusing me, but it's okay. Um, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna slowly start adding a little bit of shading here to kind of get an idea, okay, what does this bridge look like? And why is it blocky? That's the, that's the question, why is it blocky? Because a bridge usually it's got you know some shape to it or maybe it's going in an arch, but I want these to be modular pieces. So it could be bridge bridges, it could be a combination of bridges and ruins. Um, kind of like what you might see in Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong Country during, in the ruins level, the ancient ruins level. So we can do something like that. Um, that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and find some bricks, right? So we could do brick wall. Hmm. These are cool. Okay. I kind of like this one. Thank you, iStock Photo. We're going to take that, scale it up, drop the hue saturation down. And 
this and then set it to not multiply, maybe overlay. Overlay, that looks good. Sweet. And just because, again, guys, this is fan art. Well, it's not fan art. It's just, this is just a, a, a test, right? So it's not for, I'm not selling this. It's just testing out to see which textures I want to buy, right? So I'm going to edit, fill, content aware, and they're gone. All right, good. So that looks awesome already. One of the best ways to ensure um, that it doesn't look cheap is to just cut in, right? Just cut in with some, uh, some shapes here. Look at this, watch. So I'm just holding shift and it's doing 45 degree angles and it's gonna make it look like there's brick. Look at this, watch. We'll just mask that out, invert it, and then we got ourselves beautiful looking brick wall. So now it's a little bit more obvious. It's like, okay, he's sort of on a, maybe an old mill that's broken down, right? Pretty cool. Well, I don't know if there's much I need to do for that. It's pretty much ready to go. Um, we could probably add a vent or like a sewer, sewage pipe. Something like that. that's not how you spell sewage. Se how do you spell sewage? Is that no, is it, I think that's how you spell it. Let's see if we got it. Oh, there we go. What did I tell you? So let's scale that up, copy the image, paste it, and then just take this piece here and crop it out. Scale it down and zoom out. We can probably keep the brown. I kind of like it, but I'm going to actually flip it over on top of its head here so that it doesn't look like it's spilling water at the bottom there. We don't want that. There we go. Merge these layers together. We're going to add black over top because we're just seeing if this is going to work and then we'll buy the photos later, right? Not during a live stream. <laughs> All right. And then we'll cut the watermark out. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Right there. Edit. Fill. Awesome. And then don't worry. Don't worry. Take this. And then the bottom piece here, I think we can get away with just erasing just a little bit of that there, yeah. All right, so we've got some stock photos of a pipe. We're gonna add a little bit of a drop shadow in just a sec here. I'm gonna rasterize this, scale it down. Now we have pipe. Drop down the opacity for one of them. How about both? Kind of cool. And what we'll do is we'll duplicate this one here. Actually, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, so what we wanna do now is add some grass on the top of it, okay? So what we're gonna do is just type in grass. Let's see what we got. Mmm. Thank you very much, copy paste. Hey, looks good. Scale it down. Actually, we could probably do two. Yes, merge the layers together. Thank you very much. Cut it out. And we're gonna do a little bit of a squash. Ooh, this is gonna look pretty. And we're actually gonna make this look like that. Well, we don't wanna do that pink color actually. So maybe we can do, how about, let's do this. We're gonna do an or, or a, a neon green. All right, look at that. And then hue saturation, we're gonna do a colorize. Crank up the saturation and do a green like that. That looks kind of cool. Ooh, I like it. And don't ever forget about adding a nice lip of the grass going down like this. See that? Look. And then we'll flip it horizontally. Very good. Very cool. So let's take all that, convert it to a smart object. And when in doubt, add some bloom, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a bloom of green to make it feel a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna take this green, blur, gosh and blur. There we go, make it pretty big here. And then you're just gonna have just a very subtle drop in the opacity and convert that to a smart object. We got some pretty green grass. And one of the things you want to do is add, this is something that I do to make things look a little bit, they work modularly. 
Um, what I mean is you add a shadow here and add a shadow here, and then you pull down here, get rid of some of it. That way, and then also just drop it down. That way what you get is you have this sort of now modular look. It looks like there's a drop shadow, I'll show you. So now, see that? Because of that shading, it looks like there's a drop shadow from the other one. Pretty cool. Awesome. Okay, let's move these trees. I'm gonna change the uh, color of the sky. I feel like with this, well, I think the green actually, let's, let's go back to the green here. I think we probably want it to be less vibrant. We could probably even, uh, let's see here, go here, go to this green. I bet you we could probably get away with uh, actually a sort of a pinkish, grayish color. Let's save that out and then go to this one here and flip it. Here we go, save, let's take a look. Whoa, we got a lot of things to save here. Let's remove that bloom. I don't really like the bloom to be honest with you. There we go, that looks a lot better. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let me check the chat, make sure you guys are happy. Hey, it's Gordon Arbor. Guys, feel free to say hello to Mr. Gordon Arbor. Gordon does a lot of editing for my channel. He is one of my, he is the video editor actually. The current video editor. All right, let's get some rocks. All right, let's type in a rock. Nope, Thomas, that's not how you spell it. A rock. There we go. Oh my goodness, look at all these rocks. Copy, paste. And by the way, I don't recommend you guys do this illegally. Just, just for clarity, all right? Just so we're absolutely clear. This is just for fun. I'm gonna select expand by six. That should delete it all. Cool. This one got kind of screwed up. I'll just delete that one. <laughs> um, okay, so I really like this one. And I really like this one. And I really like this one. And this one. Very cool. All right, let's take those, delete those. And then I'm going to bring these here. And then I'm going to bring these here. Yeah. And then just scale it up. Right? And we want to get rid of some of those watermarks. The reason, by the way, guys, why you wouldn't do this in actual life, like if you were selling a game, is that you would get sued by, <laughs> by Getty Images. Just so there's clarity, you would get absolutely sued. So just don't, you know, don't do this. Pay for your images, right? Or find a free website. But I'm just doing this to show you. How, how quick it is, how much time is saved. Something you can do, what we're gonna do to the final image is actually add sort of some art filters to it. So it'll kind of look a little bit like braid. It's gonna look hand painted, okay? So cool rocks, I'm cool with this one being down here. Let's see here. There we go. I'm gonna make them look like they're part of, I don't really like that one, that's just strange. Um, Pull this one right here, look at that. And then this one right here. Sweet, sweet. And we're gonna take this color here, this blue, maybe go a little bit darker too, so we can take this color here and go over top of it and then drop down the opacity. And then we're gonna duplicate this base layer here all the way over top. I don't know if you can see it because of my face. Drop down the saturation, then just go to multiply or actually, we could do an overlay. Ooh, that kind of works. And then maybe even just a normal one, but just drop down the opacity. There we go, awesome, okay. And then we're gonna do a, a, a contrast shift because the contrast is a little less than everything else. So contrast shift, there we go, brightness up. And then maybe do a little bit of a hue saturation shift. Drop down the, yep, there we go. There we go, okay, got it. Merge these layers together. And we're gonna use this to create some shadows. There we go. There we go, very good. Convert to smart object. And then I feel like that tree should be in front of it. Yeah. 
Sweet. Save it out. The ground here should be, that blue is driving me nuts. It looks like velvet. So let's go to the actual blue here. Um, keep going, Thomas, there we go. And we're gonna actually drop down the saturation. I told you we start shifting the hues. So there we go, make it brown. Yeah. So we can save that out and we should be, it should look a lot better. Let's see here in the final version here. There we go. Yeah, it's, it looks a little bit better. All right, let's delete that one. The grass, I don't really like the grass, to be honest. I think it's because of the white. Let's go into that really quick. That's fine, whatever. And then this, I feel like this needs to be blue or uh, black now. There we go. So we're going to merge all those together. Color overlay, we're going to do black. There we go. Cool. Okay. Where's that one tree? There it is. Okay. Save that out. Now, this is really fun. So what you can do to add a little bit of more depth and detail and oomph to your scene is add a series of layer styles. Okay. So we're just going to slowly add in and this is one of the things I was noticing is it's not really blending in with the background very well. So what I'm going to do is a big, nice, blurry inner shadow and take the color of the background and blend it. Okay. So we're going to do it with that one. We can do it with this one here. I'm going to merge all these layers together. Go to inner shadow. Take this one here. Keep going. There we go. Yeah. So things are starting to blend a little bit better in the background. That's always good. So keep just going to each layer, grab the color behind it. There we go, keep going. Merge the layers, inner shadow. This one is a little bit more, there we go, look at that. Slowly blending in, awesome. And it's gonna be particularly effective with this layer here actually. So let me show you. This one looks the weirdest. So we're gonna go to inner shadow and go to this white there we go so now it's really really um popping right let's go ahead and blur this a little bit more so i'm going to merge these layers together blur gosh and blur there we go that looks a little bit cleaner i like that this ground isn't doing it for me so that's okay we make mistakes don't we i'm going to do a little bit of a hue shifting to make it work okay Let's see here. Crank up the saturation, even the brightness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, that looks good. But we're gonna remove the hue shift. There we go, okay, we're getting there. That looks so much better, good. I was a little bit nervous. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a white overlay to make just a little pop of, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so green, it's like a bluish green grass. It's cool. Um, so let's uh, see here. Yeah, that's fine. I don't really like the foreground. Yeah, the foreground is kind of killing it for me. Um, let's remove this actually, okay. We've got our rocks here. There we go, just duplicate them. Good, good, good. Delete this. All right, so that was a little bit of a, derailment there, but I think we're good. Yeah, I don't really like the grass. I think it's I think it's problematic, the ground here. Um, I think it's because, let's see here. I'm gonna delete these. Let's, let's go back into figuring out what's wrong here. Um, yeah, and this also needs to be fixed as well. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out together. So I think that what we can do is go back to iStock Photo and get a better um, piece of grass. So I'm going to rasterize this actually, because I don't like getting too many nesting dolls of, of smart objects. Let's type in grass again and see what we get. I wonder if something like this might actually be better. Let's copy that and see. And I'm just going to take a little sliver here, this right here and paste it over top. 
Yeah, something like that feels way better. And then what you can do is very subtly, yeah, just, just make it look a little bit more. There we go. There we go, just like that. So let's just do a little bit of a hue saturation shift here to get an idea of what we got. Come on. That looks pretty cool. That looks cool. Maybe drop the saturation just a tad. That looks way better. Now, it looks a little strange because it's almost like it's got a rounded edge. So what you do is you just sort of create a drop shadow effect. So it's sort of hanging over the edge, right? There we go. So one, two, three. There we go. Hey, that looks cool. You could even do another one that's a little bit more lengthy, a little scratchy looking. And by the way, there's those of you just joining us one more time here, just letting you know that full-time game dev is 50% off for today and through the new year. But there's only 200 seats available. Those sell pretty fast. They usually sell pretty fast. So if you're interested in joining the program with over 2,500 students, learn everything I've learned in the last decade of becoming a full-time game developer, uh, making my own indie games from the comfort of my own home. It really happened. It's really possible. I can't make any promises, obviously. But feel free to check that out below. Check out the link below. See if that's something you're interested in. Actually, let's just do this. Let's just... There we go. Yeah, we got a little bit of texture there. That looks kind of cool. I like it. And finally, merge these layers together. And we're going to do an inner shadow, uh, but it's going to be very, very sharp. And the reason we're doing this is just to let the player know, hey, buddy, you can walk on this. You want a very harsh, sharp, contrasty line there. That looks pretty. I like that. There we go. That looks so much better. Yay. Okay. I was worried. Yeah. So there's our platforms. Pretty cool. And we can move this over here just like that. And finally, well, not finally, but one of the important things I do towards the end is start adding those inner shadows um, to the landscape here. So inner shadow here. Look at this and then just give it a little bit of an angle here. And I'm gonna copy that layer style. I'm gonna put it on these uh, rocks here. Let's take all of the rocks here and paste them. There we go, paste uh, layer styles. Good, good, good. We're not gonna do it to the, cre the, cre the trees because they're kinda, you know, they're fuzzy. And so they're not gonna have that harsh shadow. Paste layer styles, there we go. Awesome. And one final thing here to make sure things make more sense here is actually if you add a drop shadow, just a very subtle gradient below each one, I believe it should, the theory is that it should make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's see here. Yeah, this foreground is killing me. I think I need to add some fog there. Okay. I'm going to do an overlay for that one. It looks a little too dark. Yeah, there we go. There we go. One there as well. Save that. I feel like these guys should be a little bit more. Let's see here. They should be a little bit more silhouetted. That's cool looking. Very nice. Okay. All right. And then the final thing here, guys. I keep seeing the final thing. Um, I'm going to get rid of that foreground, actually. I think I really like the way that looks, to be completely honest. Um, it's throwing something iconic, right? So I did this with Never Song, but we'll do it here. Windmill. Um, so you could do, just got to find one that's got a silhouetted look to it and just slap it in there, right? That's not a windmill. This is a, well, it's a wind turbine. What about an old windmill? Windmill old. Yeah, there we go. 
That one could work. Sweet. Anything silhouetted is always fair game. There we go. And we're just gonna see if we can just delete without worrying too much about all these stupid shapes here. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Here we go! Copy that. Delete. Drag it on down. And same sort of thought process here. You're gonna just uh, pick the color that it's closest to and sort of just silhouette it out, right? That's about all I'm gonna do with the windmill here. So maybe one sort of hanging out, maybe hanging out here. Convert that to a smart object and then put it right here. And to make something feel like it's blending in with the, uh, the ground, what you do is you just slowly add in different pieces of drop shadow with the gradient tool. There we go. Just like this. Very subtly. Sweet. My, my, my. That's a pretty windmill. All right. Put it... Where do we want to put you? You know, it probably should be a little bit dark, but you want to make sure it blends with the background where it's yellow, right? So we can do something like this. Maybe even darker. Let's try this. No. Wrong. There we go. That's good with me. Sweet. And then finally, obviously, you don't want that window to be like that, so let's just do white. There we go. And then a little pop of bloom. All right. So, obviously, you guys know me. When in doubt, add those god rays. Just pop them in there. They never, ever fail. They never fail. And they're a great way for you to make your artwork look more professional. I usually do it when I'm feeling a little bit uh, insecure. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's, a, it's not the best piece of art. So then I just throw it in and I'm like, oh, now it's great. <laughs> All right, so got some God rays, pretty cool. And also something you can do is add a little bit of a gradient towards the top with it, make it set to an overlay, Rip. Yeah, there we go. Maybe double that. That's cool, I like that. Sweet. In the foreground here, we're going to add a little bit of a fog. Just rolling. Fog. Just nothing crazy here. And it could be, uh, it could even be this yellow here if we really wanted to. Um, probably needs to be a little bit of a little blue. Let's increase that motion blur going straight to the right. Yeah, let's do a, uh, actually let's do, I think it's probably gonna be, looks good that way. And we'll do a Gaussian blur as well. You wanna get that motion blur, but you wanna capture a little bit of the Gaussian as well. And then drop down the opacity. And we'll do a bigger one here. Scale it up, blur it. And you would just need to go through each layer if you were to bring this into Unity, you just go through each layer and uh, and then make sure that they can loop properly. And it's not that hard to do. So for example, with, uh, why do I keep doing that? For example, with this here, what you would, with the fog here, you would just transform, you duplicate it is what I'm saying here. <laughs> You'd transform, flip horizontal, and then mask it out, and then do mask out that edge there and then mask out this one here, and now they loop perfectly, okay? That's all you gotta do. All right, save that out. Next thing I wanna do here to make it feel like a little bit more realistic, and we're not going for a hyper-realistic look by any means, it's, it's sort of a stylized 2D look, is add some 45 degree angle gradients, right? This is just gonna make things pop. So look, we got a little shadow there, we got a shadow here, we got a shadow here. Got a shadow here, got a shadow here, got a shadow here. Keep it on the hills and look at that, isn't that cool? 
save. I'll bring one towards the um, the background over here, I believe. Is it this one? Well, we could do definitely do one where the windmill is here. Look at that. And uh, we could even do one right here as well. And these are just these smaller ones. So just scale them down and just add them in. Yeah, just make things look a little bit moodier, you know? Nothing too crazy here. And the coloring is a little off. Like, it doesn't feel perfect. Something is off. It feels, uh, I don't know. It just feels off. So we're going to go into the um, very top layer here and just mess around with some of the coloring. So the yellow, I think, at the top there should actually be shifted to be more like a red um, and also lower saturation. And so we can do something like that. There we go. So you can just shift a uh, one channel of color. Sweet, that looks awesome. Um, I feel like the blue should be more satur saturated right uh, in this section here. So I'm gonna crank that up. That's actually a cyan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if I drop it to there, and then I, I can even shift it a little bit. Where's the cyans? Just shift that just a tad. Your colors are never going to be perfect, right? They're never going to be perfect. Um, I think it's fine, actually. It's just not going to happen. Um, and then one of the hue shifts I was talking about earlier is you can actually shift everything to green and then block it out and then get those trees looking a little bit green. I'm just going to sort of do a little bit of a spray paint look here of fading them. Just subtly tweaking that to be a little bit more green. And you would just apply these color shifts to the actual layers themselves, right? Okay, we could do maybe a yellow. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Save that out. I'm out of I'm out of my drink. All right. And finally, Man, standing. <laughs> hey, there you are. Hey, buddy. You look kind of like you fit in. Let's go to uh, copy image. <laughs> I love this stuff. Uh, let's turn on contiguous. And then tolerance needs to be you know, pretty aggressive here. Or not as aggressive, I mean. Uh, let's uh, expand it. Well, I think we could probably cut this out here. Let's let's do a little bit of a just a simple cut. I think that'll be a little bit cleaner of a edge. <clears throat> Almost. Careful not to double click. Hey buddy, let's let's put you in this world. Select inverse. Good. Yay. All right. Now the question is can we make it feel like he's actually in this world? <laughs> I have my doubts. I really do. So let's see here. So first thing you want to do is sort of add a little bit of a shadow towards his feet. Okay, a little bit of shadow here. And there's a little bit of a little crisp pixels here. We can cut those. Cut this, this, and this. It's going to be interesting to see if we can make this work, to be completely honest. He looks a little big, doesn't he? So let's just scale him down. Add a little bit of a Hollow Knight glow behind him, right? Make him match the world a little bit. A little bit of uh, this and a little bit of that. Set to overlay. 
and bring him down there we go and then to make him not look so much like a photograph we'll just do a filter gallery there we go drop down the opacity here we go and the eyes look creepy right now so we're gonna fade out that art style that there we go awesome okay and then that white is not really working so what you do is you just get this color here do an overlay we could even do a little bit of a and there we go and then set to multiply now he matches merge these layers together and then do an inner shadow on the right side there you go hey he looks kind of like a cartoon character to be honest he's just chilling all right and then this might be really cool actually yeah sweet set to overlay and we can even do something here with this tree here there we go yeah uh, a little bit of arrow over his head <laughs> all right very cool um add a little blurb here the name is i think charles is a good name charles says we'll do a yellow charles says i can't wait to go on a hike in this beautiful b-e-a-u-t-i full world made of stock photos charles thanks buddy that means a lot what do we want to say back right that's the question add a little stroke here we want to say Hmm, you know, I don't know, man. I think I want to say... Okay. Or we can also say... I'm going alone. There we go. So all in all, guys, after the world is created, you would simply do some post-processing effects in Unity. It really depends on your render pipeline. So I'm just going to do it in Photoshop here just to show you. You could have some beautiful bloom. There we go. Look at that. Drop it down a little bit. And then finally, you guys know I love to do this. When in doubt, add those god rays, but also add some fairies. We're going on a beautiful fairy hiking trip. Look how beautiful this is. I would play this. Pretty cool. Yeah, you never underestimate the value of, of uh, well, powering through crap. When it looks like crap, it's okay. It's not actually crap. You're going to be okay. You'll be all right. And you just power through. Set those to overlay and then do two of them. Actually, I liked them the way they were. Okay, guys. That's it. That is our 2D art for our stock photo game. You could totally get away with this as long as you are either using like free, commercial free, uh, or attribution free, or payment free uh, textures. You could go to pexels.com. I believe the licenses there are pretty legit. Or you could, you know, pay for a monthly subscription with iStock Photo. And all of these textures and all of these looks and all of this feel here, um, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't take you nearly as long trying to hand paint it, right? 
So it's gonna give you sort of a unique look. That actually looks pretty cool, I like that. And then uh, a little bit more, ooh, purple, that's nice. Cool, yeah. So that's, that's that. Um, what do you guys think? Very good, very, very good. Well, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, this was really, really fun, I had a good time. Never really done a stock photo game before, uh, so there you go. Um, and just remember guys, full-time game dev is 50% off, so if you wanna take a look at that, feel free to take a look at the link below and see if that program is for you in 2022. That rhymed. Um, <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later, sweet.